I just want to fill you in a little bit on what's happened since we last met. And um, as I mentioned, I've been sort of crisscrossing tracks with Maria Balbamal as we've traveled around southwestern, southwestern Ontario, that's where we are, uh, meeting with people about the proposed cuts to their hospitals in various different communities. Because, of course, this is not just here, but this is uh, a set of hospital cuts that are a consequence of funding the hospital budgets at too low of a level um, to meet the rate of inflation for hospitals. So if you don't actually fund to the rate of inflation, what, what happens? There's cuts, right? There's a gap between your revenues and, and what you have to actually spend just to maintain current services. And as, as we go through this year and into next year, that funding gap between the level of funding assigned to hospital global budgets by the provincial government and the, uh, and the need uh, will increase. So there'll be a bigger gap even uh, next year. Um, so uh, last, I guess since I met you last, I've been traveling around to various small towns and, and the way that we're seeing uh, this roll out is that the impact on the small and rural hospitals has been, I think, the most uh, devastating. Although there are cuts everywhere, and, and we're also facing cuts, but we'll also have to take the influx of regional patients as their services are cut in their towns. Uh, right now, where we're seeing it is in the small and rural hospitals across the province. So I've been to Wallaceburg uh, last week, where more than 800 people, the local paper said I think it was way more than that, came to uh, the uh, Oaks Inn uh, and filled the place twice. We had to do the meeting twice over because the room couldn't fit everybody uh, to uh, stop the closure of that hospital. In uh, Petrolia, had a town hall meeting a few weeks ago. There's another one coming up in a few weeks to stop the closure of the emergency department in that hospital. Sarnia's hospital is also facing cuts. I've also been up through the Muskokas to the three hospitals there and up into Berks Falls uh, where they're facing the closure of that uh, health center. Uh, today went to Bowmanville where we hear they're planning to close down uh, the emergency uh, room there. Picton and Trenton where uh, they're looking at significant cuts or possibly even a closure of a site at one of those uh, hospitals in that area. And so really what we're looking at now are very, very major, very significant cuts to uh, small town hospitals all over uh, Ontario. And I don't suppose I have to tell you the importance of local hospitals, otherwise you wouldn't be here. But certainly in every single town that I've gone to, the people who come out to the meetings have spoken up and told us about how they have fundraised for decades, building the local hospitals, fundraised to bring in more equipment, uh, to bring a CAT scanner closer to home, or uh, to, uh, to help uh, find doctors to, to bring into their hospitals. The whole uh, of the part of the town that gets involved in trying to build the civic life of the community has spent you know, the better part of 50 years or sometimes 100 years trying to improve these local health services closer to home. And this really has been a blow to the heart of many uh, communities. And as your mayor has explained, I think very clearly, uh, and as I hear from mayors and business people everywhere across the province, the loss of local hospitals and local health care services and hospitals uh, is, is a big problem. because What we know here, I'll just remind you, uh, is that the total amount of cuts that the hospital had to find were $2.6 uh, million. And the hospital planned two rounds of cuts, uh, or two phases, if you will, of cuts in order to try and find uh, those, uh, those cuts in order to eliminate their deficit. And they also had an external reviewer that was brought in, and the external reviewer said, uh, that there were achievable cuts of $1.55 million, but they couldn't find $2.6 million either. That, uh, that report, uh, as I understand it, and please correct me if I'm wrong in what here, but that has been rejected by the LIN. The hospital is required to find uh, the $2.6 million in cuts. And so the initial cuts were to uh, cut the complex continuing care beds on the fourth floor, the fourth floor, from 25 to 20 to uh, 15 uh, beds. Uh, they revised what they call their alternate level of care policy, that, so that's a policy that who can access that particular types of beds. Cut the non-urgent transportation uh, in the summertime. Uh, instituted paid parking to try and raise more revenue in the summertime. Um, has instituted a hiring freeze since last April. April. Um, uh, and then 
So out of that, okay, and then the phase two cuts came. So reductions in staffing hours, the social worker left and was not replaced. Uh, the physiotherapist was laid off. In total, 13 beds closed. Uh, so from 77 beds down to uh, 64 beds and 17 uh, layoffs uh, were announced. That was uh, as of the last meeting that we had in November. All told, out of all of those cuts, uh, they found a, um, a portion of the total. Um, what was left after all of those cuts was $900,000, so about a million out of the $2.6 million left uh, still to find in cuts. It's not clear to me, and maybe we can share some information later uh, tonight about where that other million dollars worth of cuts is going to come from in the hospital, if there are any plans or proposals that have been made public, or if other uh, staff have been laid off or programs closed or, or other uh, services cut. Uh, cut. Um, and so I think it's fairly obvious what the problems are, but I'll just outline them for you. For most people in uh, communities like Strathroy, uh, most people don't have third-party <coughs> health insurance. So there is no other coverage for physiotherapy uh, when it's cut. And, uh, and of course, physiotherapy is, is hard to find in many parts of the province, but certainly having to travel out of town uh, for physi physiotherapy would be one consequence of uh, cuts to physiotherapy. Uh, there's a problem right now with access to credit. As you know, the uh, financial markets have imploded uh, and, uh, and all of them are having trouble actually accessing credit. So the new long-term care beds that were um, given to companies like Extendicare, the for-profit companies to build, including the beds in London, uh, have been turned back to the province. They're not building uh, those beds, they don't have access to capital. And so the attempts to move patients out of hospitals into long-term care beds uh, will be stalled. And do you remember the Hospital Restructuring Commission? Does anyone remember that under my care in the mid-1990s? Any remote guesses about how much that cost? Well, it cost more than $3 billion, that healthcare restructuring. And that was to lay off staff because you have to pay them severance or you have to retire them out. It was to close down hospital beds and it was to renovate hospitals to move services from point A to point B. And during that restructuring, they closed 9,000 critical acute and chronic care hospital beds. So that's what they announced, that they were going to close. 39 hospitals uh, to be closed or merged and amalgamated. And out of that, by the end of that, that government's years, they had to uh, really take a sea change in policy. They had to reverse almost totally their policy. They opened up 4,500 of the beds that they had announced to be closed. By the end of the Harris regime, about 5,000 hospital beds remained closed across the province. And in the first years of the McGuinty government, they um, refunded hospitals and opened up a number of hospital beds. So much of that restructuring uh, was just wasted money. $400 million one year spent laying off nurses only to turn around and spend half a billion dollars two years later trying to rehire nurses because of a, because of a, a severe nursing shortage uh, that emerged uh, after uh, that round of restructuring. And that time, the problem was that the benchmarks were too low. They were based on benchmarks that weren't going to work for the geography of Ontario. That the community health services that were supposed to take up the slack as people were moved out of hospitals simply didn't exist. Uh, and uh, and out of because of emerging staffing shortages, and because there was no plan for the infrastructure that was required, so the renovations and the rebuilding of new hospitals in order to facilitate all of these cuts to services. Unfortunately, almost all of those factors are still in place today. But what makes it worse is that we're actually heading into, or we're into, one of the most severe recessions that we've seen in years and years. And this couldn't possibly be a worse time to start experimenting